Ozempic is the miracle wonder drug that's proved a game changer for many trying to lose weight. But with the next generation of Ozempic style drugs promising to fix everything from kidney and liver disease to addiction and Alzheimer's, do miracles really happen? In the time before Ozempic, execs from the fatty food and fizzy drink industries celebrated sales despite the fact almost half of the world's population was expected to be overweight or obese by the year 2030. <laughs> now, enter Ozempic. And with appetites around the world firmly suppressed, these guys are kicking photocopiers in a rage. Demand for Ozempic and Wagovi, along with newcomer Mounjaro, is so massive right now, it's estimated it'll hit around $122 billion in yearly sales by 2030. For weight loss, it really works. I started seeing results immediately. I am down 20 pounds. And it's magical. Imagine having 14 people constantly sort of screaming at you. You're hungry, you want fried food, you can smell food. There's all of this noise going on in your head and to silence it, you eat. What Ozempic has done for me is that food noise just instantly left me. So it sort of revolutionised and changed uh, my brain. Two thirds of the Aussie population is overweight or obese and last year saw around 270,000 of us access Aussie Aussie Ozempic on the PBS. People are like, oh fatty, put down the fried chicken. But it's just, it's not that easy. I, I have struggled a lot with food over the last 20 years and Ozempic has just completely changed my life. But it doesn't just stop at fighting flab and obesity associated diseases like kidney and liver issues. This bad boy has also shown promise in fighting off addictive behaviours around alcohol and gambling and may even protect against Alzheimer's. Can you imagine a future where all our oldies are shredded with great dementia free minds who haven't lost their life savings on the pokies? Anyway, with the promise of utopia, other drug manufacturers are now chasing this nirvana with about 100 types of Ozempic-like drugs set to pass clinical trials and hit pharmacies in coming years. So is humanity on the cusp of a health and wellbeing revolution, or is it all too good to be true? Dr Mike Mrazinski is a GP who has been prescribing Ozempic for years. Dr Mike, this is a drug that's in vogue at the moment, but there must be downsides, right? Absolutely. I mean, look, it sounds glamorous, and I think when you get the, Kardash the Kardashians and everybody endorsing products like this, everybody's going to think it's a wonder drug. Um, it works really well for some people, but for some people, they can't tolerate the side effects. So part of the way that it works is it stops your stomach from opening once you've eaten something. And so that makes you feel really full very quickly. And the problem with that is, is that some people just feel so nauseous that they can't even look at food. They can take one bite and then they're full. And that's just not sustainable. You cannot live a normal life feeling full all the time and really uncomfortable. And that's why a lot of patients that I see have to stop it. When people come off the drug, they usually put the weight back on, right? So do you need to stay on this forever? So, unfortunately, it looks like that, Sarah. Um, so, when I see patients and I start patients on it, um, I really have a good chat with them about this needs to be a lifestyle change. It can't just be you taking a medicine and expecting that to fix everything because it just doesn't do that. Um, your hunger receptors, your brain will go back to the way it was when you come off of these medicines because basically all that it's doing is it's telling your brain while you're on it that you're full and it's telling your stomach that you're full, but as soon as you come off of them, they go back to normal. And a lot of the time, if you've lost a lot of weight very quickly, then you're gonna try and put that back on and you'll go back to square one again. So the most important thing about these types of medicines is that you change your lifestyle with it and you don't just rely on the medication. I have to level with you, Dr. Mike. The side effects don't sound fun. And there's a lot of people watching. They're very upset with you about that mm. because they were very excited about this. Um, so I wanna uh, push you on it because absolutely. there's so much money now being thrown with the success of Ozempic, there's so much money thrown at developing kind of the next generation of this kind of drug. Billions of dollars. So do you think we're going to hit a point where those negative side effects you talk about are gone and we can all consider taking this kind of drug because it's evolved to that point? Look, it, it's, a, it's a really good point. And, and look, I think when you actually look at how these drugs work, and when I get people coming in to see me that say, look, I can't take this anymore because I feel nauseous, my reaction to them is, well, that's kind of how the medicine works. If you see what I mean, if you take away those side effects like the nausea and the constipation, then the, the drug's not going to work in the way that it's intended. So you think it's I inherent think to the way the drug to... works? So that they, they won't be able to tweak it and just we're going to get, be able to get rid of that side effect by changing something? Like, you think it's just inherent to the functioning of the drug? 
Absolutely. If you lose that part of the drug, then you're probably going to uh, lose a lot of the benefits that come along with it. I think that in the future, what we're going to have to look at is there's some hormones that are released by the stomach, uh, one in particular called ghrelin, which is the one that is released in your stomach when you're hungry. And I think probably a, a thing that the pharmaceutical industry will look into in the future is trying to really focus on that one hormone and see if they can dial it down in a way, because essentially what we've got just now is a diabetes medicine that was made for diabetes but happens to help with weight loss by slowing down your stomach but I think in the future it'll be more targeted on specific hormones that are actually going to make a difference and possibly not give you the side effects that come along with that. Uh, Dr. Mike, I'm an amateur doctor myself. Um, <laughs> Very I, amateur. Yeah, I'm kind of a Wiki, <laughs> Wikipedia type doctor. How many, if, do you have amateur patients? Like, how does this work? None of them have survived to <laughs> tell the story. But um, I was, I was reading. So apparently, the as it comes from the venom of a lizard, which kind of blew my mind. Is there any other lizards we should be milking? Uh, I mean, I think I think that that's for the guys in, in the labs. We don't, um, yeah, we we don't get to do the fun stuff anymore. Unfortunately, we, we're just uh, in, in helping our patients. It would it'd be great to to have a chat with a couple of lizards, but um, no, that's that's not my field. But it, uh, you know, it, that's the fascinating thing about medicine is that we find plants or animals or parts of plants, parts of animals that we can use into everyday medicines. And um, you know, we're really at the only, only at the beginning of modern day medicine. So where we're going to be in the next 50, 100, 200 years? Years. I mean, it's it's pretty crazy when you think about it. I got a blue t tongue out the back that's got a bad night ahead of it after hearing this. <laughs> Absolutely. Let me know how you go with that. Well, I'll, I'll report findings. We're in the medical community. We can yeah. chat about yeah. it. Mike, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks very much.